Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac. Well, I've thrown my dirt down on the carpet and I'm ready to give the Panasonic MCE47 a thorough testing. It's waiting in the wings. There it is, looking lovely and clean and pristine. Never mind, we'll soon put a stop to that. But before I take the Panasonic through the middle of this dirt, let me take you on a guided tour of the cleaner. Well, here she is, finished in a beautiful deep green with gold highlights. This is the Panasonic Electronic MCE47 with complete edge cleaning. Now I'm saying it's dark green, but sometimes it looks a bit blue. It certainly looks a bit blue in my viewfinder, but in real life, to me anyway, it looks dark green, a sort of a forest green. But perhaps I'm colour blind, I'm not sure. But there's no mistaking the gold lettering of Panasonic, written in big letters, all the way up the bag door. OK, I'm going to show you around the machine and then I'll tackle all the dirt that is just inches away from me. Here's the cleaning head. Not a lot to see, really, because there's no height adjustment control, no headlight, no nothing. This is a floating head machine. It is designed to adjust to whatever carpet or floor you're cleaning. On the side, we have brushed edged cleaning with wall-to-wall -wall brushes. As you can see, there's some brushes right at the edge of the cleaner. And I'll be testing this for edge cleaning just to see how effective these very soft edge cleaning brushes are. Speaking of brushes, let's turn the cleaner over and I'll show you the business end of this machine. Here's the brush roll. Excuse any light dust. I have been using this vacuum cleaner, although I expect by the time I finish this demonstration, this light dust will be no more. It'll be covered in a lot of heavy dust. But anyway, here we have it. The brush roll with medium soft brushes. They're not very rigid, but they're not too soft either. They're certainly more rigid than the edge cleaning brushes, which are very soft. The main brushes aren't too bad. And as, as you can see, apart from the spiral brushes, we also have some beta bars. In fact, I think there are four sets of beta bars that run along the width of the nozzle. So we'll see how effective this is at cleaning up all the dirt. Looks pretty good, but the proof of the pudding is in the performance of the machine, and we'll be looking at that in just a moment. On the back of the cleaner we've got an onboard hose, very short though. It certainly would not reach up the stairs. I'll show you later in the video how far up the stairs it'll get, but I'm guessing maybe three at most. I believe you could buy an optional extension hose with this, so it might have come included with some models, but this model I bought didn't have an extension. So it's just enough really to whip off to do your upholstery and to do your nooks and crannies. You also have an extension wand and inside the extension wand is a nice long crevice tool. So we can put the hose onto the tube like that. So we do now have at least a little bit more reach. We don't have to bend when we're doing around the sides of the room or when we're reaching up high for those cobwebs. The other cleaning tools are stored behind this little flap at the back. And as you can see, we've got this sort of all-purpose slash furniture nozzle and a dusting brush which, let's feel the softness of that, not too bad actually, certainly softer than say a dusting brush on a Hoover Pure Power but not quite as soft as Dyson's dusting brush but not bad, still wouldn't use it on anything too delicate though and we can attach the dusting brush onto the end of the crevice tool to give us extra reach when we want it but of course we can put either of the tools directly into the hose end like that. This is the cord storage at the back of the machine with a quick release hook at the top so just turn that down and we can release the cable in one go. The cable comes out of the top of the bag housing but there's a little clip just below the handle here that enables you to hook the cable over and that keeps it high up out of the way. Also, that's the lower hook which is fixed and under the lower hook 
we've got a built-in carry handle. At the top of the bag compartment we've got the hand operated on off switch and at the front of the cleaner we've got a piston operated bag full indicator and an electronic speed control. To access the dust bag there's a little button here to remove the bag door and here we have in this case a reusable dust bag but I think replacements now are of the non reusable variety but when this machine was the current model the bags were reusable and there's a slide clip on the bottom which enables you to unfold the folds at the bottom of the bag, empty it into the bin, refold it and then slide the clip to secure and it's best if you only reuse it twice, three times at a push as long as you've not been cleaning up any fine particles such as plaster dust which you shouldn't really clean up with a vacuum cleaner anyway. At the bottom of the bag compartment we've got a sponge filter which can just be removed for cleaning. I don't think they're supposed to be washable these but I don't see why I couldn't wash this and you can just actually see it does have some fine dust on it. You can see here where it's been under two prongs at the base of the cleaner so that does have a light layer of dust. I have used this machine as I say just for general vacuuming I've not tried it on anything major though, not until today. So let's make sure that this filter is back in place properly because we don't want any of my bag of filth getting anywhere near the motor. So there we go, that's securely in place. And the final filter, the post motor filter, is located here at the bottom of the bag door. So this is where the exhaust air comes out and this is another non-washable replaceable filter. I'm poised behind my Panasonic MCE47 ready to pass it through the middle of all this dirt. I'm going to start the machine on its lowest power setting but I'll turn it up to maximum before I move the machine forward and back through the middle of this mess. So. For the first time ever, let's see how this Panasonic performs on my bag of filth. Well, that noise you can hear Ooh, sets my teeth on edge with a nice new vacuum like this. That noise was the rice mainly, I think. And I noticed, I don't know if you saw, on the forward pass, it did leave quite a lot of the rice. It was only when I pulled the machine back that it removed the majority. But of course, we have not one, but two lines of shame, I'm sorry to say. The most prominent one, of course, is here. This is obviously where the belt is on the underside of the cleaner, but there is a thinner, fainter line just here. But the main area, let's take a closer look. Well, that's a little bit of paper's managed to be sucked in and then sort of escaped. But anyway, apart from that, I'm going to feel it because I can feel a couple of bits of rice it hasn't made a complete clean sweep in two passes but considering how thick the dust is on this carpet, the muck I put down, it's not done a bad job at all. Let's take a closer look at the edge cleaning brushes now and just see how effective they are at pulling the dirt in from the side. I also do this test against the skirting board but I just want to see how it copes with a big pile of dirt right next to it. Well, it does seem to scatter quite a bit with those little edge brushes. But obviously this is an extreme example of dirt. I mean, look at it. Filth. But all in all, the main area it's cleaned, I'm pretty pleased with. 
Okay, as much as I don't want to use this lovely cleaner on all this mess, I've got to clean it all up. So we'll have a few more shots while I clean up the rest of this, and then I'll test this machine specifically against the edge of the carpet up to the skirting board. I'll put some dirt down the side, see how effective the brushes really are. Pretty impressive result from the Panasonic Electronic MCE47. I did notice it was scattering some of the larger particles, especially the rice. It seemed to scatter it to the side and to the back a bit, but obviously it, it's rather an excessive amount of rice for a vacuum cleaner to cope with. But for general cleaning it's done very good, it's lifted the pile. And I will say it's very, very easy to push. And I can imagine this, this would have been a good choice for somebody we needed a, a cleaner that's fairly lightweight but was almost effortless to push backwards and forwards. Okay, I'm just going to put some dirt, I'm just going to go into that corner there, put some dirt right up against the skirting board and we'll test out the Panasonic Complete Edge Cleaning. Going as close as I can before the camera loses focus. It hasn't done a bad job at all. Not perfect. I can still see, especially when I run my finger over here. We can see some dirt that it's not got, but I mean, it was a pretty tough job. But it has done very well. There is a line just beyond that, the line of shame, of course, where the belt is, but it's pretty good but not good enough. I will need to get my crevice tool out and finish the job properly. Before I attempt to clean my kitchen floor with this Panasonic, let's see how far up a standard flight of stairs we can go with the hose, extension tube and the all-purpose nozzle. It's not going to go far. Okay, la-di-da. One step, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Two steps. Three, it's starting to struggle. No. Four. At a push, but no, the nozzle isn't lying flat. So, you can get up three stairs. Oh dear! Three stairs, that's all you can get up using this, so you would have to 
if you wanted to attempt to clean your stairs with this machine, you'd have had to have either the optional stair cleaning hose or the included. I'm not sure which models came with which. I'm sure somebody below will be able to answer. I don't know if this model came as standard with an extra hose. It was pictured in the instruction book, but that instruction book did cover a different model as well, a model with a headlight. So that might have come with the extension hose. But this machine is very light, so I suppose it's not ideal. And I suppose you could carry the machine using the handle at the back and clean the stairs this way. Yes, it's doable, not ideal, but certainly doable. But really, for stair cleaning, I'm sure there were better cleaners available than this one. Well, it's time for the final test. How does this Panasonic MCE 47 cope on hard floors? Now, I'm going to do it on its highest speed initially, but I'm wondering if I was to do it on its lowest power, would that prevent some of the scattering that I'm pretty sure is going to occur? And anyway, we'll start it on full power. There's no way of adjusting the cleaning head. I can't make it higher, I can't make it lower. It just floats on the top of the carpet or floor. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to clean floors with this, <laughs> but I'm not bothered if I damage the floor. I'm more bothered about damaging the vacuum. Anyway, I'll start it off on slow and then ramp it up to full and see how it does. Well, a good result in front of the cleaner. <laughs> a very good result. Now, if it had managed, apart from a little bit of flour there, if it had managed to do that, I'd be pretty pleased with this machine. But the truth of this demonstration lies just out of camera shot. So I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll just adjust, I'll just adjust the camera so we can see what has happened to a lot of the dirt. So here's the carnage behind the machine, the bit you might not have seen, but I could feel against my stockinged feet. Not, I'm not wearing stockings. I think that's what they call it when you're just wearing socks. Anyway, <laughs> that's what it did. Cleaned in front quite nicely, but as you can see, a lot of it scattered behind. I'm just going to pass the machine over the other area as well, but this time I'm going to do it on its lowest setting and just see if that prevents some of the scatter. Yes, it's done the same thing, but I'm turning it down now to minimum power. And for the final part of this hard floor demo, I'm just going to do the area where it's scattered, which mainly consists now of the rolled oats. It's picked most of the flour up and the couscous. It's just scattered the larger particles. I'm just going to try it on low power now and see if that makes a difference. A very similar result actually, although it's still scattered, but at slightly less speed than it's scattered on full power. But ahead of the machine, as you can see, this cleaned area, having it on low power didn't make much difference to that, but it's still scattered. I would be able to pick everything up eventually, but I'd be chasing dirt around the kitchen until the cows come home. So again, it's an upright cleaner with a revolving brush that you can't turn off. So I was expecting the scattering effect. If you want an upright for your hard floors, I'd always choose one that has a brush roll you can turn off, or one that has a specially designed brush roll that is meant for carpets and hard floors. Well, that just about concludes my video demonstration of the Panasonic MCE 47. As you could see, it's a very good cleaner, light, effortless to push, and a pretty good performer on most surfaces. Obviously hard floors, bit of a failure, and stairs, just forget them. And anyway, where was I? Yes, 
Stairs are no good, floors are no good, carpets, fantastic. So if you just wanted a vacuum for your carpets that was light to push, fairly easy to carry, then this, back in the day, would have been a good choice.